Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, let's get started. Well, in the last class, I introduced some basic basic elements of information system. I discussed what is information system and the differences between information system and the the relationship between information system and database and the difference between a database and the traditional Excel spreadsheets. Well, now uh, in this class, let's continue our discussion. So let's go to the file types. Yes, there we go. So last class, I introduced the hierarchy of information and and the highest level is files. So now let's focus on this type, the file. Well, depending on the contents of a file, it can be classified under different categories, master file, transaction files, reference files, history files, and backup files. So now let me discuss each one of them one by one. First of all, master files. Well, as its, its name suggests, it is the primary file that contains the information, the interest. Master files contain relatively permanent information and are analog to ledgers in the manual system. Well, for example, uh, customer, employee, vendor, and inventory files are examples of master files. And next, transaction files. This type of file contains relatively uh, temporary information and are analogs to journals in a manual system. Sales, uh, purchases, payroll information, and cash receipts are examples of transaction files and and remember this type of file, this type of file is relatively temporary but of course uh, transaction files are also valuable as it stores of transaction information transaction files are frequently access to provide answers to variety of questions posed by the users at all live levels in the organization. This process of using transaction file information to update the appropriate master files is called file maintenance and will be discussed in later in this chapter. Well, next, reference files. Reference files, which are also called table files, are used to store relatively permanent information that is needed only for reference purpose during a file maintenance process. Mm, for example, text table and price list files are examples of reference files. These files can be updated periodically, but they are accessed only for reference purpose during the process of updating a master file. 
For example, in the file maintenance process to update the customer the customer master file in which the sales invoices transactions would be used. A price list file might, might be accessed to verify the unit prices of items sold. But during this process of updating the customer, uh, customer master file, the price list file would typically not be updated. Instead, the price list file would be updated in a separate, separate procedure. When the list, uh, the price of uh, specific items changes. Next, history file. History files are old transaction files and the master files that are maintained only for reference purpose and for legal reasons. An example of a history file would be the file containing, uh, for example, July 2003 sales invoice, invoice. These files are usually maintained offline as, as archive file. They are stored using inexpensive storage media, such as magnetic tapes or low cost magnetic disks and cannot be instantly accessed. Presumably, there is little need to access the previous transaction files in the current year. Well, the last file type is backup file. As, as its name suggests, backup files are duplicate copies of transaction master and reference files. Since history files are typically maintained only for legal reasons, and since there is little danger of accidentally destroying history files, most organizations would typically not maintain the backup copies of history files. It is good practice, you know, to make frequent backup of all transactions and all transaction and uh, and master files. Backup files should be maintained on site as well as offset off site at a secure location. Well, now that uh, we have discussed the basic elements of information system, let's turn our attention to the data processing cycle. All information system applications undergo a sequence of steps from data input to information output. This process is called data processing cycle. It uses um, temporary data in a transaction file to update the permanent data in the master file and also generate relevant reports. The sequence of steps in the data processing cycle are data input, data preparation, data processing, file maintenance, and lastly, information output. Well, first of all, data input. Data, data input involves a collection of 
raw data and converting data into computer readable form. Data input results in the creation of transaction file. For example, uh, paper copies of sales invoices may need to be key and uh, may, may need to be keyed into the computer system's uh, sales transaction file using a keyboard terminal. New technologies facilitate automatic emerging of data. For example, using the barcode scanner. So this is data input. The purpose of this process is to collect information out from outside the information system, primarily from the, the transaction files. And second, Data preparation. Data preparation may needed may be needed to facilitate data processing and file maintenance. Data preparation entails two main steps. First, validating input data to filter out error transactions. And secondly, sorting input data to facilitate the process of updating the master file. If the file processing method calls for master files to be updated instantly rather than rather than periodically, then the sorting step would not be needed. as will be discussed in the, in the later chapter. Outline processing system results in the master file being updated instantly, whereas um, batch processing system results in the master files being updated periodically. For example, uh, at the end of each day. In both online and batch processing system, data input must still be validated to prevent the, the error data from entering the system. Data processing represents the next step in the data processing cycle. This step includes all the calculations, uh, comparisons, and manip manipulations that are undertaken in the particular application. For example, in the sales application system, data processing might involve calculating the sales tax payable on each invoice. The data processing step take a transaction file as input and may have access a reference file. And next, file maintenance. File maintenance. This is the step where the master file is actually updated using transaction file data. There are three types of uh, file maintenance activities. They are add, update, and delete. The add activity involves adding the new master file records, for example, adding a new customer to a customer master file. The update activity involves modify, modifying an 
existing master file records. For example, a customer's address could be changed. Or uh, the customer's balance may be updated to reflect new credit sales transactions. Specifically, customer balances will be increased for all customers who had credit sales transactions in a particular period. The delete activity involves deleting an existing master file record. Although the data preparation step filters the transaction file to detect erroneous transactions, some types of errors can be uh, detected only at the file maintenance step. For example, if the customer's balance would exceed the credit limit, if a credit sales transaction amount is added to the previous balance, then that transaction would have been rejected. Such rejected transactions are stored in a suspense file to be dealt with subsequent to the file maintenance run. Although data processing and data maintenance are distinct steps in the data processing cycle, it should be noted that they are frequently combined into one data processing run. The, uh, the last step is information output. This step is where reports are generated and output either on paper or on the user's computer screen. For example, uh, in a sales application system, the information output could result in the following report. Uh, sales, an uh, sales analyze report and salesperson's perf um, performance report, product turnover analysis and customer statements of account. Reports can either be routine scheduled reports that are always generated and we have demand report that are generated only if specifically requested or ad hoc customer reports that are designed to answer specific user questions. Well, depending on the type of data processing methods employed, any of these types of reports can be instantly generated by the end user with little or no involvement of data processing personnel. Well, as discussed above, the data preparation step may only be partially necessary depending on whether the processing system is batch or online. Specifically, transactions do not need to be stored in the online processing system since the desired master file records can be accessed instantly. But 
transactions still need to be validated, even in the online system. Also, in this figure, that the transaction file is exceeded during data input system in order to store input transactions, and the master file is accessed during the file maintenance step in order to read and update the master file records. Data input options. Well, in, in the uh, above discussion of data processing cycle, we alluded to some options available relative to data input, file access, and master file updates. Data can either be input instantly as it's, it is generated or subsequently at some predetermined points in the time. For example, in a sales application, sales invoice, sales invoices can be caged in to the computer system directly as sales orders are received. Or sales information can also be input into the computer system using the barcode scanner attached to the point of sale terminal. Well, these two methods shows that the sales information are inputs are input into the computer system online. But alternatively, sales order information can be also recorded on paper as sales orders are generated later perhaps uh, at the end of each day. All of the paper documents will be caved into the computer system. The resulting file containing the transactions in the computer readable form is called the transaction file. When data are entered instantly into the computer system. The process is referred to as online data input. While when the data are recorded on paper and subsequently into the computer system, this process is referred to as batch data input. Batch and online inputs are depicted in, in this slide. In, in batch input, either a magnetic tape or magnetic disk is used to store transaction files. But in the case of online input, a magnetic disk device is invariably used. So next, let's see the two app, two, two file organization and access options, both online and in batch. Well, as I said, there are two primary methods of organization and access. Similarly, uh, they are called sequential and random. Sequential and random. 
sequential file organization means the records in the file are stored in sequential order of the primary key. The records can be stored either in ascending or descending order. For example, an employee master file could be stored in an could could be stored in ascending or descending order. Uh, the order of the, uh, for example, the employee number, which is the primary key. The records must be accessed sub, uh, sequentially. That is, n minus one records must be traversed to access the nth records. When new records are to be added to a sequential file, it is important to maintain the sequential order of all the orders. No matter it is new or old, uh, new or old records. In effect, an entirely new file must be created. Merging the new records with the old ones so that the correct sequential orders is maintained. And we have random access. It is also uh, referred to as direct access files. Records in a random files are scattered throughout the storage media. Records are not stored in any particular physical order. A hashing routine is used to determine the storage location of records. Well, the hashing routine takes the primary key of records and applies some mathematical algorithm to generate a disk address for the records. To access a particular record, the hashing algorithm is applied to its primary key to determine its storage location. Thus, in a random access file, the nth records can be directly accessed without having to traverse the n minus one records. Hashing algorithms are not perfect. It is possible that when the algorithm is applied to two records, with different primary case. The same disk address could be generated. Such duplicate disk address are referred to as clashes. That is, a clash occurs when a record is attempted to be written to a location that is already occupied. Such clashes are stored in an overflow area on the magnetic disk. When the clash occurs, it is resolved by placing a point alongside the disk address that is already occupied. These pointer points to the outflow area location where the second record that has generated the same disk address is, is stored. Oh, well, a third option in file organization is the indexed files. File indexing involves 
the creation of an index. Like uh, when you look at the dictionary or find the specific contents on the book. The first thing you do is to look at the index. Similarly, the information system creates an index. This is the third option in, in the information system where files can be accessed. Well, file indexing involves the creation of an index that contains key values and and associated storage location of records in a file. File indexing facilitates both sequential access and random access. Well, for this reason, this method is often referred to as indexed sequential access method or ISAM. To locate the particular records, the file index is first searched to obtain the storage location of a record, and then the record itself is located on the disk. The file index itself can be accessed and searched very quickly, but locating a single record is slower in the indexed file relative to a purely random file because, because two accesses are required, one to the file index and the second one to the actual disk location. To access all records in the file, for example, to generate a sequential listing of the records, the file index is first accessed to obtain the first record's disk address, and that record is accessed. Thereafter, each subsequent record is accessed in, in sequence by first looking up the index and then retrieving, retrieving the records from the disk. However, this process is slower than in a purely sequential file organization, since the index must be accessed after each record to determine the location of the next sequential record. Well, uh, next, let's see. The two file update options. Let's see how the files are updated. There are two options regarding the periodically of the master file update. If the batch data input is employed, then the master file can be updated only in batch mode. That is, the file maintenance takes place at predetermined intervals, such as uh, at the end of the day. As indicated above, when data are input into batch mode, the transaction file is created 
the after in the file maintenance step, all master files, all master file records are read and those records with corresponding records in the transaction file are updated to reflect transaction activity. Both transaction file and the master file are organized sequentially. Batch processing to update the master file is depicted in this slide. All files are on magnetic tape. The transaction file must undergo the data preparation step of sorting and editing. The transaction file must be sorted in order of the primary key of master file. For example, in the batch processing, where uh, credit sales transactions are used to update the customer master file. The sales transaction file must be sorted by the customer number, which is a secondary, secondary key. Also, this slide that a transaction listing and an error listing are generated as a result of the processing run. But if online data input is used, then the master file can be updated either in batch mode or in online mode. Although transaction data can be entered into the computer system online as the transaction occurs, the data may simply be stored in a transaction file at the time of the input. Records in master file that are affected by the transactions are not updated instantly. The transaction file can then be used at a predetermined interval, say uh, at the end of each day, to update the master file. Thus, although the data entry occurs online as transactions occurs. The relevant master files are updated only in batch mode whenever the file maintenance run occurs. In this option, the master file is organized is organized sequentially, given the master file is updated only in batch mode. The difference between online data input and, uh, and batch input is simply that the transaction file is created as transaction occurs with online input and at batch processing interval with batch input. Oh, uh, well, the, this table represents the possible combinations of data input and master file updates for the batch and online options. The only combination that is not possible is here. 
this option is not possible. Batch data input with online master file updates. It is possible to have online data inputs combined with batch master file updates. The more common combinations would be batch data inputs combined with batch master file updates and online data inputs with uh, combined with the online master file updates. These two are more more common. So a comparison in deciding between batch and online data inputs and master file updates, the trade-off to consider is between efficiency and timeliness. If transactions occur sporadically, as is likely for many organizations, the batch input is more efficient because data are converted into computer-readable form all at once in one operation. Online input is less efficient if transactions occur sp sporadically since the data entry operations will remain idle during times when the transactions are not occurring. Also, the batch input, batch input and update typically requires a separate data preparation step to sort and edit data. So in contrast, online inputs and updates doesn't require a separate data preparation step. Transactions are simply processed as they are entered. Transaction inputs will still need to be edited in the online system. It is only the sorting step that is eliminated. And now let's turn to the timeliness. Online data input facilities instant, instantaneous updating of the master file when, with the batch input. The master file can only be updated periodically in some instance. The periodic nature of the update process is preferably because the greater greater control over the file update process is generated. Care can be taken to ensure that transaction being used to update the master file during the periodic batch processing are in fact all valid transactions. As already noted, a separate edit row detects errors in the transaction data file. And these erroneous transactions are excluded from the file. However, when the master file is updated only periodically, its records are not always up to date. You can consider a sales 
an account receivable application where the customer must follow its updated in batch mode at the end of the day. During the day, the customer file will not reflect the correct customer balance to the extent that sales and collection transactions would have occurred, but would not be used to update the master file records until the end of the day. But in contrast, if still transactions are entered online and the master file is updated as transactions occur, then the customer file would always reflect the current balance of each customer. Given that timeliness of information is being increasingly critical, online data entry and instant master file updates is preferred option for most organizations in the current business. Uh, moreover, decreasing hardware costs in recent years have made it cost effective for all business, but the smallest of the of organizations to use online data input combined with real-time master file updates. So this slide shows the comparison between different options. Well, now that we have defined and discussed a number of elements of the information system, let's explore how these various elements or components all fit together. Every system, including an information system, has an objective, one or more components, constraints within which it must operate, and a boundary separating it from environment. The system approach is a way of thinking about an information system and how its component, components interact with one another. The approach involves taking a, his, a, uh, say a, a holister view such that the system is seen as more than just the sum of its parts. Problems, constraints, and the potential solutions are examined from the entire system's point of view, and not just as subsystem or component level. One way to embrace the systems approach is through general system model. This model defines a system as a set of elements that operate together to achieve some objectives. For example, a system might be a NOBA, your family cat, an automobile, or even the planet Earth. For our purposes, we like to think about systems from an information perspective. That is, let's focus on systems inside organizations that take data and generate information useful for decision making.
from the general system model perspective, a system has an input process output a boundary and operates in the environment. So a system can be treated as a black box. So for a system at this level, the input and outputs are known, but exactly what occurs inside the system is unknown. Well, for example, your body is a big system. You know, the input could be water, uh, water and food. And the output is the energy. But what exactly happens inside your body? Or how the subsystem, uh, for example, new your blood cycle system your nerve your nerve system what happens to these systems you do not exactly know so in these terms of view a system can be treated as a black box developing an understanding of what a system actually does is critically important. So let's assume that you were visiting a local business and you were attempting to understand how accounting transactions were recorded. How would you begin to develop such an understanding? The most logical way in which this could be accomplished is divide a large system into smaller parts. This process is known as factoring. The factored parts are known as the subsystem and generally form hierarchical structures. The difficulty with factoring is that the number of interconnections between these systems, and it is known as the interfaces. Each interconnection or interface is essentially a communication channel between each subsystem in order to fully understand each subsystem. You must know what data is being passed across the interconnection or channel. So in this in this slide, for example, an accounting system is divided into these factors. So, this is how you calculate the interfaces. The general rule for specifying the number of interconnections is using these two formulas. The, the number of interconnections is ns times ns minus one divided by two. 
where Ns means the number of subsystems. So this is how we determine the number of sub, uh, interconnections. For example, here we have subsystems A, B, C, and D. We have four subsystems. So in this case, Ns equals to four. Four times four minus one, which is three, uh, four, four times three is 12, divided by two is six. So in this case, the number of interconnections within four subsystem is six. And also you can easily calculate the number of interconnections in the case of 10, subs, uh, 10 subsystems, that is 45. So using this way, the number of interconnections can be calculated very quickly. All right, uh, that is the last point of this chapter, the calculation of subsystem. Well, a quick recap. In this chapter, I introduced some basic elements of information system. And in this class, I introduced the steps of data processing cycle and different options for data input, uh, file organization and access, as well as file update options. And lastly, I introduced the systems approach. So that is the end of this class. Uh, I will see you after the spring break. Uh, in in the next class, I will introduce the basic elements of database, which is the core of information system. It is the heart where how the information is organized and processed. So please, please let me know if you have any questions or I will see you after the spring break. Um, Thanks hello, for professor. your attendance and your attention. Bye-bye. Um, hello, professor. Yes. Um, how are you? Good, how are you? You have I'm... any questions? Yeah, Did just you... wanted to make sure, so you, all the slides, you're gonna post it on a canvas or it's just, um, we have to look at the... Oh, I see. Uh... Yeah, one of the students also asked me the same question. And so my reply is, uh, I'm not allowed to post these slides on Canvas, but uh, you can watch my uh, oh, recordings. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And yeah. And also, thank you for the rechecking the homework. I saw your comments for the first homework, and then I realized it's supposed to be, I like, I have to adjust those, the points the decimal points, but yeah, thank you so much for the rechecking. I appreciate oh. it. All right, my pleasure. Uh, yep. Thank you, Professor. You have a nice day. Mm, you too. Happy Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.